Hey, what's up, YouTube? Israel back in with another video. Well, it's that time of year again. It's getting a little chilly outside. Uh, the baseball playoffs are about to start, and Halloween's right around the corner. Yes, it's fall, uh, my favorite time of year. Uh, my birthday is on Halloween, so I've always um, liked fall a little bit better than the other seasons. Um, so I try to enjoy it, and especially with my fragrances. Um, I tend to lean towards uh, more of the thicker, heavier fragrances anyway, so fall just gives me an excuse to uh, wear the fragrances that I enjoy uh, more than the other ones. I'm going to do two categories. I'm going to do fall and I'm going to do winter. I'm going to try to keep it brief. I'm going to try to keep this video short as possible, uh, just not to bore you guys out there, just to give you guys an idea. The only difference between the fall category and the winter category is pretty much the strength of fragrance. Um, my winter fragrances are just a lot stronger. They last a lot longer. Um, and some of these fall fragrances that I've worn over the last couple of years in the fall just remind me of fall. You know. So without further ado, it's going to be my top eight fall and winter fragrances. So before we get started with my top eight fall, uh, I'm going to do a quick uh, honorable mention. And this one is actually a woman's fragrance, which a lot of the, the people in the Fragcom have been uh, talking about this one, giving praises to this one over the last couple of years. And this is, I think, probably leans more towards winter, uh, but, you know, you can wear it either way. This is a, uh, a woman's fragrance, but it does uh, uh, have a little bit of, uh, of masculine vibe to it, and it's definitely strong. Uh, two sprays, and you're good for about 10 hours. Uh, so... Um, Honorable mention goes to Black Orchid by Tom Ford. If you guys ever tried this one, uh, really nice fragrance. Pretty much just, to me, to my nose, it smells like chocolate-covered raisins. I'm pretty sure there's a lot more going on with this one, but just to keep it brief, this one to me smells like chocolate-covered raisins, which isn't a bad smell. Um, so, yeah, uh, and this thing is beast mode, so go easy on the trigger. Two sprays max, maybe three at the most. But, uh, yeah, so honorable mention goes to Black Orchid by Tom Ford. Okay, starting things off at number eight. Um, I actually did a review on this one a couple of years ago on the EDT version. Uh, coming in at number eight is Midnight in Paris by Van Cleef and Arpels. Uh, pretty much what you get with this one is um, leather, tonka, and incense. Um, yeah, really nice fragrance. Lasts a long time. Now, this is the discontinued EDP version. The EDT version is readily available on eBay. Uh, you can find it for about 20 bucks. The EDP version is a little bit harder to find, and I've seen these selling for about 100 bucks for the small size, which is 2.5. So if you can get your hands on it, give it a shot. This is my number eight. Uh, Long-lasting, sweet, leather. It's nice. So coming in at number seven, uh, this is actually uh, the only clone, I believe, in my, um, in my uh, list here. Uh, it is from the house of Rasazi, and it is the Tuscan leather clone, La Yakawam. So pretty much with this one, you just get leather and raspberries, like like Tom Ford, but uh, this is a bang for your buck. Um, I think you can probably get a bottle of this. This is a 75 mil for about 45, 50 bucks. Check it out on eBay. But yeah, so coming in at number seven is La Yakawam. So coming in at number six, we have one that I did a uh, first impressions video of last week or a couple of weeks ago. Um, from a house I've never tried before. It is Field Notes from Paris by Aneke. Uh, this one pretty much what you get is tobacco, coriander, and orange flower. Uh, not super loud to me. It was a little reminiscent of a uh, Lure Homme, uh, but it's got its own, it's got its own thing going. The sillage on this is amazing, guys. You should check it out. This is also very inexpensive. Um, definitely nice in the fall. Coming in at number five on the list is going to be the only, uh, fragrance from the house of Serge Lutens. Uh, this is a very nice fragrance. Umbois Vanille. In Umbois Vanille, you get vanilla, coconut, and licorice. This thing pretty much uh, just smells like burnt caramel. Um, Some of you guys out there might think that burnt caramel sounds kind of funky, but it actually smells really nice. So get your nose on this one. Number five is Umbois Vanille. So coming in at number four is one that I actually got my nose on a couple of years ago, and I wore this one for uh, Thanksgiving time. Uh, I'm not sure if Thanksgiving is still considered fall, uh, but uh, to, to, I guess in my list it, it is considered uh, fall. Uh, but I wore this one for Thanksgiving, and every time I wear it, it does remind me of my day at Thanksgiving with my family. And so it is Costume National Ohm. So in Costume National Ohm, it's pretty much cinnamon, sandalwood, and cloves. This thing is strong, too. It's, uh, to me, it smells like Jack Daniels whiskey. If you guys, if there's any whiskey fans out there, it pretty much smells like if you were to pop the top on Jack Daniels and take a whiff, this thing smells just like it. Now, when it dries down, it gets powdery and uh, cinnamon and, and, and clove. It's really nice, uh, it's, it, and it lasts all day long. So um, check this stuff out. Costume National Ohm. Get your nose on it. 
So coming in at number three is from the House of Killian. This actually was, uh, it made my honorable mention in my top eight Killian video that I did last week. But I actually found the bottle online pretty cheap. And uh, the more I wore it, uh, the more, man, it reminded me of fall. It's got this really nice hay note and some honey in it, some tobacco. Uh, but the hay note really made me made me uh, just think of like um, scarecrows and like hay rides and, and uh, pumpkin patches and stuff. Um, and it really put me in that fall mood that is Killian's uh, Light My Fire. Coming in at number two is a fragrance that's pretty popular in Fragcom. has a lot of the, the same notes that I have that you're going to see throughout this list. Tobacco, vanilla, and cinnamon, which is, these notes are going to be in a, quite a few of these fragrances that I have in my list today. It's going to be Herod by Parfums de Marly. So, pretty much Herod, just, it's it's either winter or, or fall. You can flip a coin on which one you like it more. Um, I prefer this one a little bit more in the fall, just because there's a, there's a pipe tobacco note in this. It just makes me think of the fall for whatever reason. Um, so. so, coming at number one, this actually made uh, my top three of my Killian video that I did last week of my favorite Killians. This one is light enough to be considered a fall fragrance in my book, um, but it still has pretty good longevity. Uh, coming in at number one is by Killian's Single Malt. So Single Malt is uh, plum, wheat, and vanilla, um, and has pretty decent longevity, um, and it, has, it smells great, um, and just reminds me of fall. So, Okay, now that my fall list is out of the way, let's uh, check out my winter list, what I'm going to be wearing for the winter of 2016. Coming in at number 8, I did an unboxing video of this one, and I did a comparison video of this one. If you guys haven't seen that, check it out in my playlist. This fragrance coming in at number 8 has juniper berries, cinnamon, and vanilla. Nice sweet scent, very reminiscent of another popular fragrance oh, yeah. from a designer house, of Victor and Rolf. This is 1899 Hemingway by History de Parfum. So my number seven fragrance is actually, um, was very under the radar for a long time. It actually took the fragrance roll by storm a few years ago. Um, it's still a favorite of mine and it lasts forever on my skin. Um, this one is uh, amber, vanilla, and oud. It smells so good. Uh, I get lots of compliments wearing this one. It's like one of the longest lasting fragrances in my collection. That's going to be 24 Gold by Scent Story. Yeah, this thing smells amazing, guys. Nice and powdery. Um, smells like raspberry and vanilla, um, like some sort of like cookies, like like some sort of um, pastry. It's just amazing, and it lasts forever. So coming in at number seven, we have one that uh, was considered to be one of the most popular fragrances um, in the fragrance groups for a long time. Um, I enjoy this one, uh, not as much as a lot of people do. I enjoy it for what it is. Uh, vanilla, cinnamon, musk, and clove. The infamous musk ravageur. This thing lasts... 12 hours. Sadly, I hear it's been reformulated. To my nose, it still smells the same. I haven't done a comparison video. I will be wearing this in the winter. It smells really good. Vanilla, musk, cloves. Very nice. Not for everybody. Sample at first, but uh, it's still a staple in my collection. So coming in at number five is a fragrance that I first heard about from Man Loves Cologne, Sebastian, uh, a couple of years ago. And it was actually uh, my first video that I ever did. The first review that I ever did. You guys want to look way back in my archives to see the first video I ever did was on this fragrance. I sold that original bottle, got my hands on the reform, and then ended up getting the original formulation again. That is L'Instant de Galant Extreme. Yeah, so this is cocoa, patchouli, star anise, and some citrus notes. Uh, very nice fragrance and lasts forever. To me, the reformulation is just as good. Um, and then actually the reformulation is selling for about $35, I believe, on Fragrance Net. You guys can check them out there. But this is the original. And uh, this one's going to stay in my collection. Uh, very nice. Always get compliments when I wear this one. Again, not for everybody. Try before you buy. But this one is really nice. So coming in at number four, it's a fragrance that I did an unboxing. Uh, I believe it was last week, maybe a couple weeks ago. Um, this is one of the longest lasting fragrances I have in my uh, collection. And this one is a new favorite of mine. Coming in at number four, we have Montal's Honey Oud. So pretty much Honey Oud is what it says. It's Honey and Oud. A um, little bit of cinnamon in there, but pretty much I just get like a fresh honey and some um, some oud. I did describe it as a skanky oud, so if that's not your thing, then you might want to pass on this one. But this stuff lasts forever and definitely is a winter fragrance. Um, fall, maybe a little too warm for this one. I did I did two sprays the other day and got compliments uh, at my kickball game just because I was testing it just to wear out. It wasn't even like cold outside. Still got compliments on it, so hey, this stuff uh, smells amazing and it lasts forever. That's exactly what I look for in my fragrances. Um, and I believe it's under $100, so check this one out. So coming in at number three is uh, one that I did a unboxing video the other day. This one is Cinnamon, Honey, and Vanilla. 
Um, that is Parfums de Marley Oajan coming in at number three. This thing has great longevity, great projection. Uh, get compliments on it. It's very cozy, nice, warm, uh, very sexy fragrance. Again, um, try before you buy, but this is going to be my number three. Okay, so coming in at number two has been a favorite of mine for a long time. And actually, uh, there was a clone that was made, if you guys uh, have heard. I'm pretty sure there was a... Uh, you guys probably heard about it because there was a lot of talk uh, going on about it back uh, in April, I believe, of this year. Uh, from the House of Perry Ellis, they made a Black Vanilla Absolute, the BVA, um, which uh, you it, it smelled really close to this one. Um, but no one can top SDV, that is Spare Two Stugla Vanilla by the House of Guerlain. Just glad I got it back in my collection. It's been out of my collection for a while now, but I got a little, I got a great deal on this bo uh, partial bottle, and couldn't pass it up. So. Coming in at number two is Spiritus Stubli Vanille. So what's going to be my number one fragrance? Well, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys out there already know just because I haven't mentioned it yet. And it was my number one in my top eight Killian uh, video I did last week. So, of course, my number one is going to be Back to Black by Killian. Um, this thing is honey, tobacco, cherry, vanilla, and some raspberry. It smells amazing. Uh, a lot of people don't like it because it is powdery if you don't like uh, baby powder or powdery fragrances you won't like this one but it smells like uh, a powdery honey um, and raspberry cherry tobacco scent amazing always gets me compliments lasts ages yes it's expensive but i like it i enjoy it and so that's why it is my number one for my winter fragrances um i hope you guys enjoyed my list um which ones of my list have you tried which ones do you like which ones do you hate uh can you give me your top fall and your top winter um, hope this video wasn't too long for you guys. Uh, thanks for all the comments. Uh, try to get back to everybody. Thanks for subbing, guys. Thanks for all the thumbs up. Really appreciate the support. Um, until the next video, you guys take care.